Today we're looking at the Lincoln-Douglas debate. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Um, also, I'd love to see your answer to question number five in the comments. So today is a special episode of the Daily Bell Ringer because as you can see, we are on location at an actual site of the Lincoln-Douglas debates. Uh, this is where the fifth debate took place in Galesburg, Illinois, between Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas um, here on the campus of Knox College. This, this debate took place on October 7th of 1858, where a crowd of nearly 20,000 gathered here to see Lincoln and Douglas debate. So what were the Lincoln-Douglas debates? Um, this was a debate that took place as part of a Senate congressional race where Abraham Lincoln, who was the Republican, was challenging arguably the most powerful man in Congress, uh, Democrat Stephen Douglas, for his Senate seat. All right, and the two agreed to engage in a series of debates uh, prior to the election. So to this day, still the custom of candidates uh, meeting and debating issues before uh, an election kind of traces its, its roots back to Lincoln and Douglas. So so unlike today, though, when you see candidates debate and they only get like maybe five or six minutes to uh, talk to each other or give their stance on issues, in these debates, actually, Lincoln and Douglas had over an hour to each speak and basically, uh, to, you know, discuss issues uh, or, or state their, their ideas. Now, up until 1913, actually, the uh, state legislature of Illinois decided who was going to be the next senator, but Lincoln and Douglas decided, despite that, that they were going to go and take their message out to the, the people. So. So, a couple of reasons why this was such an important debate. Of course, the primary issue being debated was the issue of slavery. And of course, Stephen Douglas was the, the main congressman responsible for that Kansas-Nebraska Act. And so a lot of people wanted to hear what he had to say about the issue. Um, also, his position as being the, the lead senator in the Senate and possibly the next president of the United States led to a lot of national attention for these debates. Lincoln, on the other hand, was completely unknown. Nobody knew who this guy was. He was a member of this new Republican Party. Uh, he was this lawyer from Springfield that really nobody knew anything about, but really, you know, the, his main gist of his message was he needed to stop the spread of slavery. So there were a total of seven debates across the state of Illinois, one in each of the seven congressional districts. So there was one in Ottawa, Freeport, Jonesboro, Charleston, Galesburg, Quincy, and the last one in Alton, uh, Illinois on October 15th of uh, 1858. So these debates drew huge crowds and it wasn't a debate like we see today where you know the, there's a moderator and the crowds are kind of subdued and everything. The crowds here it was almost like a carnival or a professional sporting event where they were cheering and booing for the candidates that spoke. So what did they say? Lincoln, his main thing was he, he argued against the spread of slavery. Um, and I want to make it clear, he did not argue to end slavery. He argued against the spread of slavery and not allowing it to go any further into the West. And he really built a, a big moral case against uh, the spread of slavery. And he argued that going back to the founding of the nation, that slavery doesn't work with the whole system of all men are created equal. And he argued that, you know, the slave states trying to push for slavery in the West was actually part of a conspiracy, I guess you would say, for the South to get more control and possibly push slavery across the entire nation. And he pointed out the problems in Douglas's plan of popular sovereignty that he had put forth in the Kansas-Nebraska Act that, of course, had led to violence there in Kansas during the Bleeding Kansas period. Douglas, on the other hand, argued that popular sovereignty would work. He was still sticking with popular sovereignty. And he argued that the problem with popular sovereignty was it was not properly policed and that, you know, if, if they, they got the elections worked out to where they were actually knew what was going on with that, that everything would work out fine with popular sovereignty. And he argued that the issue of slavery should be really left up to local governments, that it shouldn't be the federal government making the decision on slavery. It should be the people in these new states or territories themselves. But from there, Douglas really got down into the dirt into in these debates. He really started using racist language, giving racist ideologies for why slavery should be able to expand, and uh, he really tried to paint Abraham Lincoln as being an abolitionist and as the Republican Party and being a party of abolitionists, because again, at the time, you got to think abolitionists were considered to be extremists, and so that's really what he was going at. Despite Lincoln clearly winning the debates, in the end, Douglas was able to win this uh, election for Senate. Now, this is truly one 
of those cases of losing the battle but winning the war. Abraham Lincoln was very demoralized by this and thought, you know, he should just give up. But what happens is Abraham Lincoln now becomes a nationally known figure. A lot of people are looking at this guy and saying, hey, who is this guy that took on Stephen Douglas and was able to match him or at least, you know, and beat him really in the debates themselves? And so Abraham Lincoln being in these debates is really what sets the stage for Abraham Lincoln then becoming a nationally known figure and going on to become the 16th president of the United States and leading the nation through the Civil War. All right, so hopefully you learned something there, and thanks for watching.